Cardinal swore an oath of secrecy and locked themselves inside the Sistine Chapel on Tuesday, starting the conclave that they hope will elect a new pope who can heal divisions inside Roman Catholicism's hierarchy while tending to its 1.2 billion faithful. The procession of cardinals into the chapel capped a day of carefully scripted events designed to showcase unity among the princes of the church as well as their continuity with centuries of tradition. But the rituals came against a backdrop of stark divisions over what kind of leader Catholicism needs to guide in its 21st century. In the evening, black smoke rose from the chapel, signaling that cardinals didn't reach the two-thirds majority needed to choose a new pope in their first vote. The voting was set to continue on Wednesday morning. In recent weeks, cardinals from around the world have publicly vented grievances over the opaque governance of the Roman Curia, the Vatican scandal-plagued administrative body, putting themselves against a coterie of colleagues who are long-time Vatican insiders. Pope Benedict XVI's resignation the first in some 600 years sparked a flurry of discussion over a range of issues including the management of the Vatican's bank and the sluggish pace of reforms aimed at making Holy See finances more transparent. Cardinals have also deliberated over the need to revive Roman Catholicism in Europe, its historic home, and the shift of Catholicism's demographics towards the Southern Hemisphere. Before entering the Sistine Chapel, cardinals filed into street. Peter's Basilica where they celebrated a Mass or electing the Roman Pontiff, the ceremony that sets the tone for cardinals voting in the conclave. Cardinal Angelo Sodano, Dean of the College of Cardinals, used his homily to call upon cardinals to unite behind whoever steps into the shoes of street. Peter. Each of us is called to cooperate with the successor of Peter, the visible foundation of such an ecclesial unity, said Cardinal Sodano, who served as the powerful Secretary of State under Pope John Paul II in the early part of Pope Benedict's papacy. Before him, seated in the rows of flowing crimson robes, were the 115 cardinals electors, some of whom viewed Cardinal Sodano as the ultimate Vatican insider. Later in the day the cardinals walked in procession through corridors lined with frescoes, marble and Swiss guards donning warlike helmets. Once inside the chapel, the cardinals swore an oath together to not reveal any information about the election to the outside world. We promise and swear to observe with the greatest fidelity and with all persons, clerical or lay secrecy regarding everything that in any way relates to the election of the Roman Pontiff, the Cardinal said under the looming fresco of Michelangelo's Last Judgment. Each Cardinal then approached the lectern, placed his right hand on the Gospel and, in varying accents, pledged in Latin an individual oath of secrecy. The Master of Ceremonies then pronounced extra ognes Latin for everyone out. Vatican staff ranging from former Pope Benedict's personal secretary to audiovisual technicians carrying bearing tripods suddenly poured out of the chapel. The massive wooden doors then shut with a thud. At that point, attention focused on the world's only point of contact with the cardinals, a slim smoke stack protruding from the Sistine Chapel's terracotta roof. When a pope is elected, white smoke rises from the stack. When voting fails to produce the two-thirds majority required for a new pontiff, the smoke is black. Thousands of people crowded into the square, but there was plenty of room to walk around. People hoisted flags from all over the world, including Brazil, Mexico, Malta and France. When the smoke first emerged from the chimney, it appeared pale on the massive screens planted throughout the square, prompting cheers from faithful who thought a new pope had already been elected. A collective groan of disappointment quickly followed as the smoke billowed out, pitch black. I never a 21-year-old student from Portugal studying fashion communication in Rome, said she wasn't religious, but sees the conclave corresponding with her time in Rome as a huge coincidence and she not willing to pass up the historical value of what is going on. She has classes on Wednesday, but I'll try to get up early to get here, and then we'll come back after classes are over if a pope isn't selected. I would really like to see the American I own bail they get it. But I don't think they would elect an American pope, she said. Referring to Cardinal Sean O'Malley, the Archbishop of Boston. Bill Appel, a 36-year-old seminarian from Covington, K.Y., is halfway through his five years of studies in Rome at the North American College. He doesn't have a favorite in the conclave. There are just too many biographies to be familiar with. His friend and fellow seminarian, Christopher Deleon from Baltimore, is just hoping they pick the holiest cardinal 